Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. This episode we're going to be talking about Control, the follow TV show in Age of Empires Definitive Edition. But first, my name is Christian. I'm Bobby. I wasn't in re- invited to the Star Wars month that I hear you guys are going to do. Um, I don't know why I wouldn't be invited to something that isn't real, first of all. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's happening in May, uh, around May the 4th, which I think is the unofficial Star Wars month. But of course you're invited, dude. The Force is with everyone. Come on down, right? No, I, I, I don't can't... like Star Wars games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh well there's I gotta be to put... at least a, one star wars game you like there's so many yeah, of them then you like fall kidding order. i was kidding i was kidding mm-hmm. yeah i loved fallen order um okay and i i don't like the tagline um sequels like fallen order and what's the other one i forget yeah Something i will survivor uh, yeah jedi, jedi survivor, survivor. Yeah. i will never remember which one of those is first the um the Tomb Raider reboots I might as well jumble them up. Like I cannot ever remember what like rise of the Tomb Raider. Sure. Maybe cause she's being elevated out of obscurity. I, I, fuck. I don't know, man. One, two, three. That's what I want guys. One, two, three. Oh, you want clear markers like the original yeah. star Wars series episode one, two, three, uh, yeah. except when they're released, like, like the fourth one's Four, released. Five, first. Six. Yeah. I don't know. It all gets confusing. Uh, there's no plug in the show notes because I didn't put one there. Emilio, do you have anything in your back pocket that you want the people to know? I always have something in my back pocket. It's called the internet. Once I pull it out, I go to DL, dlgaming.net. <laughs> From there, I can uh, click around. I can uh, see our beautiful faces, uh, get mm-hmm. behind the scenes stuff, maybe just a little bit, maybe. Um, you can see the high scores of all the people who have uh, donated the most, then you could be like, I want that high score. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could get to our Patreon where we have, you know, it'll just make your whole Discord experience uh, better. And if you don't want your Discord experience to be better, it's because you haven't gone there yet. You could also get there from our website. Just click on Discord and join. Anybody can join. Not everybody can stay, though. If you're an asshole, you're done. You're done, yeah. son. Get out of here. Um, Tag Laurel loves his band hammer. <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking, oh, do you think our listeners would be interested if we put together like a newsletter? Like say they don't listen to the podcast anymore, but we send them an email once a month. It's like, these are the games we talked about that we think were fun. Uh, just, just so they have something to try, something to go off on, even if the time that they listen to the podcast has been removed. Um. Uh, yeah, it might always bring somebody back for sure. I think um, those newsletters every once in a while, like certain certain emails, I'll always read for some reason. Like, um, who is it? Um, God damn it! There's a comedian. He just it seems like he sends you an email just to you, and it's only like once every two years. I'm like, yeah. I always read the whole thing. You know? Wow. Because he's is... like, hey, I did a special in a certain different way and I get away from this. I'm only charging $5. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. I did it. Who's the redheaded Mexican guy? Nobody knows that he's Mexican. Big guy. Got in trouble for jerking off in front of female comedians. What? What is his name? He was the Louis biggest C. guy in the world. <laughs> Louis C.K., <laughs> thank you. That guy's Mexican? I don't yeah, know. he's half Mexican. Okay, cool. Louis C.K. sends you, maybe he's just sending you an email. He's like, you know who I love in my audience? <laughs> no, could you imagine? Emilio. <laughs> yeah. The you Emilio newsletter. That's what he calls it. <laughs> yeah. It's just to you. Okay. <laughs> Little did he know I can't read. <laughs> On this podcast, we ping things. And I would like to ping that uh, as a present for my brother and sister-in-law, I got them both Lorcana starter decks. And I was anticipating the time where we all came together to play. And so we took over this beautiful little cafe in this awesome neighborhood uh, where none of the tables were really big enough to accommodate four people playing Lorcana. And we were in the middle of the cafe and the boundary of people is just people kind of watching us sidelong as we sing Disney songs and play this fucking game and have so much fun. Um, My sister-in-law... I was up against her for a game and she lost and I saw the spark in her eyes 
and the madness. And she said, you know, I just didn't get any cards. And then she's Googling how to make her deck. Mm. And I'm like, I got, I got her. I got her. I got her. She's got. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, my brother-in-law also really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm playing a Ruby Emerald deck, uh, starter deck. And I have all these like nuke cards that cost five lore. So I'm nuking the field when their high level cards come out. And I feel like it's cheap until you learn how to counter that, which I'm sure is also equally easy. But I won all my games against these people who've never played before. So I felt pretty good. Um, I don't know if we need the hyperbole, dude. I've literally never seen you win a game of anything. So <laughs> I, what are you I talking doubt, about? I highly doubt that this randomly happened. Okay. Well, I fixed their deck. They were just full of fucking 101 Dalmatian. <laughs> Why do I keep the, killing these puppies? <laughs> the audience is going to kill me for this, but, but I want to get into it a little bit, Bobby. What is... What does each color represent in Lorcana? I don't or, think it really represents anything. Oh, does it mean? Uh, no, yeah. it doesn't matter? They're just, doesn't really, no, it uh, doesn't really mean. I mean, every color has kind of its own style a little bit. That's what I but, mean. Yeah, but I don't, like red is a little more aggressive. Um, okay. It's got a lot of rush cards, some evasive. Uh, it's more like combat control. Blue is a lot of items. Um, green is a lot of like trickery, goofy, weird stuff. Um, and My then, specialty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, purple is a lot of bounce. And then what, what is the bounce orange is putting one? things back in your hand? Or, or like an opponent putting stuff back in their hand. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of that stuff. And it, it kind of like red, but a little more like, I don't know, involved. And then, I don't know, I feel like the orange is like a lot of Rush decks. But, yeah, I mean, they kind of have a little bit of personality. There really aren't a whole lot of cards in Lorcana, so, like, there's there's not too much you can do yet. But that new set's coming out soon. Oh, boy. That's the third yeah. set, right? Uh, fourth one. Oh, that's the fourth. Okay. Yeah, they're uh, cranking them out. And they just keep getting more and more expensive, man. I, I know it's more expensive in Canada, and I feel bad for you because they're already expensive alone like just the regular prices here but like the prices just keep going up and up man it's crazy what's the price for you yeah, it depends on what set you're getting but like i was i bought a booster pack or a, a box of boosters off of ebay for like a hundred bucks pretty cheap um but now they're going for like at least 130 140 and did you get anything good bobby out of that box yeah, I got a Beast Tragic Hero, which is probably, aside from like the the enchanted ones, which are just rare by by just definition, right. they're just very rare, and so therefore they're expensive. Um, Beast is probably the highest priced card because it's just like people always want four of them in their deck. It's a really good card. So how much did it, uh, how much was it? How much is it worth? Sorry. They're like up to sixty, sixty-five dollars now. Uh, they were oh, like wow. forty, forty-five when I. And the first pack I ever bought at Disneyland, the first, uh, it was a um, starter deck, but it comes with a booster pack. I opened it up and I got that card. So I've always kind of liked that that card, but I didn't realize at that time like how rare it was or how expensive it was. So now I'm wondering, do you? Do you play the two beasts in your deck or do you sell them to buy another back another box? No, man. If anything, I would, I'd want to buy two more beasts so I can have Damn. four of them. But I I keep looking and they're just like super expensive and nobody around here has them locally. That weird discard I got, um, the card that was a misprint. I talked about it a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I ended up trading that for quite a few, like maybe about 50 bucks worth of cards. Got some pretty good stuff with that. But um yeah, man. No, we got we got cat wrangling going on here. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Fatso jump on it. Jesus. Yeah, uh, we we opened all our our packs together, and we decided that we were gonna have some in house rules with like the fourth of us. We we're gonna have like an amateur friend league, I guess, where each time we meet up, we can make one trade with one player. So uh, we're both working on our starting deck colors, and then we have all these other cards that we obviously can't use. So there's a little strategy behind building our decks between us and, and trading. And 
It's my sister-in-law's birthday coming up here pretty soon, and we're gonna go to our first tournament together. Is the is the idea? So good. Nice times with Lorcana. Thank you, Bobby, for introducing me. And <laughs> uh, so you didn't play. You had four people playing, but you didn't play like a four v four or a three v three. You just did one v ones. Yeah, we just did one v one. Everyone played a game against each other, basically. Um, I've never played against more than one opponent. I'd really like to try that sometime. Do people draft, Bobby? Lorcana? is that a is there a draft? Um, yeah, they do that from time to time at game shops. I told you about how I went to one and I totally messed it up. So in Lorcana, you're only allowed to play with two different colors. Every card oh. has a color, so you can only play with two oh, colors. Oh, so drafts kind of gets fucked up, huh? Yeah, no, but in drafts, they say, okay, you can play with any oh, color. I didn't I know that. So when we're doing the draft, I'm only picking two colors, and I had the worst deck. Dead last, lost every game. Didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, draft is... Uh, I don't have the mental capacity to be good at draft. I just never have been. Uh, but anyway, Christian, uh, whenever the... like gas runs out on this fire of you guys like enjoying your cards you can just put them all in a pile and do what bobby just said just uh ignore colors and draft and drafting is so fun it, like like at your level where nobody knows what the fuck they're doing you know what i mean yeah, uh, yeah. if i draft somebody i go up against people s somehow they know what everybody like i have friends that'll be like he has blue white and he has black red green and he had and i'll be like i don't even know what i have like i <laughs> I, I don't know what i'm building yet you know that's fun yeah this yeah. is my first foray as an adult into uh a, a card game you know so join me podcast listeners and forget about magic the gap overrated magic the what never heard of her lorcana that's i did want to ask you uh christian i know you tried it a little bit for, for a month you said or something like that and you magic got away the gathering. Is it, yeah yeah was it because um did you get away from it because the, the rules were too crazy or there was just too much to no, it? No, I, I don't know. I can't pinpoint the exact moment. Um, like me and Rianne were playing online beside each other. We're having a lot of fun uh, playing okay. on MTG Arena. Sounds like um, it, it's it's me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wait, like one wait, of those what? speeches. You, you're yeah. like he's asking he's giving you like this exit survey like what's wrong with magic why don't you like magic and you're like well it's it's me it's not you magic it's oh me. gotcha it's just i'm not in a good <laughs> yeah. place right now i'm not ready for a relationship with a tcg and yet you are you're playing Lorcana, but exactly yeah bobby sam asked me if you were coming over tonight and i told him i don't know no nah, dude i gotta it's too late for me i had to film I had to film today. Uh, I'm working this weekend and uh, in two weeks too. So my weekends are going to be pretty crazy. Dude, only fans doesn't count as as filming, dude. You make it sound so nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to subscribe to Bobby's OF, that's also on our dlgaming.net. I feel like yeah. Bobby unironically could do all right on OnlyFans. Probably not top yeah. 1%, but... I'm not even know. exactly sure what OnlyFans is. I'm I'm guessing that's just like... Because I hear it's more than just people posting naked pictures of themselves or videos, right? Like people go on there and post. Safe I had to have stuff. it described to me as well. I like uh, so you subscribe to a person. So I was subscribed to Bobby for whatever that price is, uh, five dollars a month or whatever, and then I then have access to your media. So I can't just go and get all your media. Yeah, and I get that part, but I just I'm curious more about the content. Like, is it only sexually explicit content? I don't know. Do we need a DLG only fans? That's what I'm getting at. I don't think so. I think it's definitely for people producing sexual content Most of, the time, of, of, yeah. of themselves. Okay. I would and say ninety eight percent. Yeah, and people sometimes go on there as a joke. Like a well-known person would be like, oh, it's a picture of me on a diaper, but they have like one picture or whatever, and they're not really naked. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's in poor taste. Like leave that place for them. Just post that stuff on your Twitter or something. I mean, right um, now, if you just screen capped what's going on right now, it's like a furious pussy rubbing um, from Christian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're aggressive with that cat, dude. This cat? Yeah. He loves me. <laughs> uh, Emilio, what are you pinging? Uh, what am I pinging? I am pinging. I didn't know we we're in the pinging thing. Um, this was just a headline. After 12 years of, de of de development, seven days to deadline. Oh, I put that all wrong. 
Seven, seven days to die? Is that what it seven is? Seven days to die. <laughs> That's the game. Is that the game? Fuck, I fucked it all That's up. That's what you wrote. Very That's what popular you wrote. game. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've played that before. No, I know. Um, but it's coming out of early access. Um, I, I, I mean, I didn't have a good time when I got on there. But it's one of those things where, like, I joined somebody who plays it religiously. And it's... Um, Man, I, I I get what it's like when I try to introduce somebody because I just go, it's the greatest thing ever. You got to rock a rama. And so when I played this and the person was like, it's the greatest thing ever. And, you know, it was not the greatest thing ever. Um, yeah, it's all about you got you to be very gentle when you are obsessed with something and you want to pass it on. Yeah, I, I and I need to learn how to do that because I'm very bad about that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> see our exit survey from five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I thought the article was funny. It said, you know, I what's next coming out of early, early access? Project Zomboid or Star Citizen? Like, uh, yeah, this was one of those that nobody ever thought was going to come out. Um, anyway, it's going to go from $36 US to $45. And... Um, it's got to be better than when I played it way back when. I would Maybe. give this game another another chance. Yeah, I me too. really I, didn't like it. Let me see. Yeah, I, I do. I wonder if it's in my library. Hey, yeah. this is one of the first crafting survivals I played, and I went back maybe, almost oh, must have been two years ago now, and they had invented like the electricity system, and they had all these weather effects, and they reworked the leveling. So I think the max level was like uh, 50. But it was like Morrowind where like, whatever, the more you shoot arrows, the more your arrow shooting goes up uh, mm -hmm. instead of previously. I think there was a skill tree system where you invested skill points, but XP was global. Uh, and I have fun every time I go back to seven days to die. It's so addicting. So mm. I wonder what's changed in this 1.0 version. Um, like, What's the headline feature? I can't. I'm um, through, there's not really a side. headline feature. Um, uh, there are a few things here. Let me see. Um, yeah, it wasn't like a new zombie gore system, remade vehicle assets, uh, new challenge system, more zombie variants, updated controller support. Yeah, like, you know, maybe they were just like, guys, let, let's just do this. You know, let's pull. If not now, then when? Yeah, kind of thing. You do, I mean, most of the time you want a giant fucking, you know, huge patch notes, but, you know, yeah. maybe the gore system and the, you know, maybe all this stuff. It all sounds, seems kind of low potatoes, yeah, though. It really you know, does. Like, they have the console launch in big letters, which I get, which, not guess, like, that is very exciting for them. Maybe that's where they put the majority of No, that's of huge their for that, yeah. For the yeah. devs, that's huge. Uh, they're not going to be moving on to other games. They are going to continue. This is their shit. They're going to continue just uh, supporting this game. The hmm. dev's name is the Fun Pimps, right? Seven days yeah. to die. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they're dealing fun. Okay, Bobby, what are you pinging? I just want to mention a game that somebody had recommended to me. So I've been talking about a lot of simulation games the last few weeks, and particularly... Um, theme park sim games. So somebody mentioned a game called Parkitect, which I have never heard of before. And as I read the reviews, everybody is referencing Railroad Tycoon 2. So apparently, uh, Railroad Tycoon 3 was not a Roller very Roller Coaster Tycoon. What okay. was I saying? A Railroad, Railroad Ty Tycoon, which is a game that does exist, which was the first game he made before he made Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's too oh, okay. late. You already sold 50,000 titles. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <copies>. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's what I meant. It, it, everyone says RTC, so like I, I don't know. Maybe I just slipped Railroad in there. But um, yeah, this game's on sale for 15 bucks right now, and it looks pretty good. I mean... Everybody says it's kind of like what Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 should have been or kind of like an upgraded version of Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. So I am kind of interested. Yeah, 94%, 6,000 yeah. reviews uh, and co-op. Christian? Wow, we could have a co-op. 
a park right beside each other. I, I listened to like an hour long video essay on Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, and apparently people are still playing it with uh, with mods. And there's a co-op mod where you put your parks right beside each other, and that's how you co-op. You know, like you're kind of competing against each other. I don't know. Well, that's what Sim City was supposed to do <clears throat> when they released that new version that did it did terrible but um it was supposed to be like i don't know it, it didn't live up to it but it was supposed to be like you build your city someone else builds another city and then you have trade between those cities or you can exchange resources or do other things like there was supposed to be some way to like interact with the other cities there which is kind of a cool idea but it just it I, is yeah it didn't work or they didn't Bobby, have get me function. on the phone. If you're running out of puke buckets, I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I wonder how it works. Like, are you working on the same park or is it like neighboring parks or something? I don't know. I'm just surprised. I've never heard of this game. And, um, when did it come out? The DLCs have good reviews as well. One's at 89%. The other one's at 95. Yeah. Wow. Cool. 2018. This game is not that old what's also interesting is they describe it as a business simulation game not necessarily like a theme park simulation but business sim bobby's number one search filter is not that old (laughs) (laughs) all right that's it for me that's it from you okay we're moving on to highlights which games we have been playing i wonder what Emilio's daughter Luna has been playing recently, but maybe we'll get into that later. A lot of dolls, been... a lot of like putting dolls to sleep. Putting dolls to sleep? That's the she loves that's it. the current. Yeah. That's what gets you going as a kid. Yeah. I remember lining up all my teddies from shortest to biggest. I don't know why. That that was just fun. <laughs> Age of Empires Definitive Edition. Guys, it's the calm before the storm. We all know what's happening this weekend. I can't hold back my anticipation. Manor Lords is coming. I took the whole oh day gosh. off work to play it. And I'm just I'm sitting at my computer being like, okay, what do I play while I wait for, you know, Moses to come down from the mountain with the tablets? Like, it, the anticipation is killing me. It feels like I can do nothing else. So I decided to go back to the old stomping ground, which is Age of Empires, the definitive edition, which... I never tried when they released all these definitive editions, Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 3. I never tried one, even though I bought it. (laughs) So I started it up, and yeah, dude, this is still fun, still addicting. Kind of just how I remember it, uh, playing it as as a young kid. Um, Played this around the same time I played Dune 2000 and, and Red Alert. And, you know, it was so... I was the Romans, you know? I was building... I was building Roman houses. I was exploring. And then somehow in my kid brain, I was like, wait, who are these Roman guys anyways? What are they about? And that's kind of the first time I remember doing, you know, a dive into history from video games. And I feel like that stuck with me ever since. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Age of Empires, for a lifelong love of history and for a, a pretty fun RTS, which... I will disinstall as I lose my entire life and personality to Manor Lords in in the coming week. God, uh, I, hope, I hope it leads, it lay, lives up to your own hype, dude. It, impossible. It'll disappoint me for sure. Uh, yeah. Age of Empires is five dollars on the spring sale. So if Manor Lords isn't your jam, if maybe it's a little too involved, uh, you can check out Age of Empires Definitive Edition. And five bucks. I mean, that's a that's a steal. You're getting. Five campaigns for for that. The campaigns are fairly involved. Like, there's some story. There's sandbox mode. There's a lot here. So, um, yeah. And if you don't want to spend any money, uh, well, depending if you have Game Pass or not, Age of Empires Four, which I really felt like uh, didn't get the attention that it deserved, or maybe it's just not as good as I thought it was. Um, yeah, that's still uh, out there. Speaking of Game Pass, I it's you know we we're cutting back. Um, we we're just looking at our budget, so we we're cutting all these like, subscriptions and stuff. So I was like, I hardly use Game Pass, so I, I cut it off. And then what? Ten days later, I bought that new TV, and that new TV has the game mode. And uh, I was like, fuck! All right, well, we gotta get Game Pass. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I mean, there's what? a Bluey game. 
uh, because the kids. Oh, Bluey the kids, game. Oh. Yeah, there's a bunch of, actually, there's a bunch of, Mila loves um, unpacking. Is that the one? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She loves that thing. Uh, and she plays a bunch of games on there. So it's totally worth it. Okay. I think it trans. I have Ultimate. So I think I still have my PC version. Sweet. Yep. Game Pass with the TV. What else have you, uh, just a uh, small bird walk, what other subscriptions have you canceled? Just out of curiosity. Oh, um, let's see. We got rid of. Oh, uh, there was like. Oof. I don't know. Some. Definitely some. Okay. I don't yeah, know. There you go. Okay. But we had to keep. We tried to get rid of Amazon, and it's so sneaky, dude. We canceled Amazon and um, Amazon Prime, and it just switched itself to month to month. And we realized, uh, oh, fuck, we, we still order things. And. And then we were like, oh, but Fallout's coming out. And then uh, well, now we're stuck. So whoever it's came impossible. up with that. Yeah. It's so hard. Whoever. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Heard it here first. Amazon. Because <laughs> when you're describing tightening your belt around these subscription services, I, I, I'm reminded by a Mary Kondo episode. You know, she goes and she gets people to lay all their clothes out on the bed. And then she says, okay, this is all your clothes. Just keep the ones that you wear. That, that's my simple task for you. And most people just end up keeping like 95% of what they own. And then she mm. goes, when's the last time you wore this? Well, never, but you know, I never know. And it's, it, it's hard to get rid of those subscription services, man. Yeah. Yeah. We did definitely get rid of some. But I can't okay. think of them. If you say so, you don't have to defend yourself here. Bobby, <laughs> the fallout show. <laughs> did you like it? Yeah. Um, so I'm not done with it yet, but I'm, I'm about six episodes in. I'll tell you what I don't like is Amazon as, as a streaming service. I, I don't know why. So I've got a weird technical problem with them. Um, I, I like how when you're watching the show, if you move the mouse, you can see the actors that are in whatever scene yeah, that's you're really watching. Cool. That's really nice. But yeah. what seems to happen is when it's being watched letterboxed, you know, you have those black bars below and above it. Um, it changes those into a bright green on my computer for some reason. It's super weird and super annoying. And it's only Amazon that does it. So I'm going to blame them. Oh, That's annoying. Because uh, you're not watching it on TV, I guess. Maybe? Um, no, I was watching it on a TV screen, but it was through a computer. Huh. So, yeah. That's weird, man. Yeah, it's a weird thing, but it's only Amazon that does that. But the show itself is really good. I enjoyed it. It's um, It's got me and I guess everybody else wanting to play Fallout games again. So I looked around. I'm like, dude, honestly, like I, I don't have time for a Fallout game. But, you know, I'm kind of curious. I'm looking around and I found Fallout Tactics from like 20 years ago. Super old game, but tactical turn-based combat before that was like a real popular thing so i might be checking that one out i don't know i I would kind of like to um play fallout 4 i I really liked fallout 3 but that's the only game i ever played and i feel like fallout 3 is kind of i don't know that's like the one when i see the show i just like relate everything to that and it just (laughs) seems like that was like the one that got everybody on board with with fallout or really blew it up um but yeah, the show is good. Not quite done with the first season. Um, I don't know what's going on with this Maximus character and his voice. He's doing like this weird, like, like nerdy kind of voice or something, I feel like. And I don't know if it's like that's well, the character. Like this is... What, I'm, what so is confused so about, I'm confused why about, Denzel so, Washington was doing that voice. And then I was like... How old is Denzel Washington? He looks really young here and really Somebody good. Did they dye his, his hair? Son. Somebody told me it was his son today, but uh, I don't know. Completely I don't different so. actor. I was like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> Blowing my mind. I don't, Denzel's never done TV in my... Anyway. Um, yeah, dude. I So he... I had a hard time swallowing the pill that was Maximus. And by the end, mm-hmm. I did because I, I'm done with the season. Um I sacrificed sleep all week last week to finish it. I, uh, me and Sam really enjoyed it. Um, I the, Here's my theory. He just, I think he's a really young guy, like her age, but he has an old face. He looks like he's 40, but I think he's, 
I don't well, know. If we were to talk about old faces, how about the vault dweller's brother? That guy, I assume, <laughs> is supposed to be oh. it, like her little brother, but yeah. he's got a face like a fifty-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that guy. That guy was. I. They have these actors that are so distinct in the show. Like they yeah. all have, which is awesome. I, I actually think the casting was very good. Um, uh, although Maximus again was a hard pill to swallow i think he just has an old face but he's supposed to be a young character with a young geeky voice i think that's what happened there but yeah and i don't want to blame i I don't want to blame actors because for all we know the director could just be influencing that performance or like who who knows man but it's just he's making some weird choices and i don't quite get it particularly the voice thing i Um, don't understand and he wears his power armor and it's like maybe maybe it's that he doesn't know how to use it but i'm like Dude, you really get your ass kicked in that power armor a lot. Like it's almost a hindrance. Like he, I, I'm just yeah. past the part where he gets locked in it, like stuck in inside it. And I'm just like, I feel like you're better off without the power armor, dude. Like <laughs> I think it's weighing you down. Um, he. Uh, oh, speaking of that, I was. It's funny because okay, so Sam is like a very. She needs to know now, so she'll go Wikipedia things as we're watching them. Oh, mm-hmm. and she'll be like, oh, he's you know like about the actor or whatever or or like the character she'll just she has no care no care in the world about spoilers so we're watching it together and i'll be like huh. and she's like what and then i'll explain well, like in, in the show or in the game i was like it's very power armor is super valuable but super heavy so if you're just carrying a leg it's like 50 pounds so it's very hard to carry in it. And uh, yeah, just right now you're just like, it was weighing you down. It's like, yeah, it weighs you down when you're trying to fucking make, make money in the game, dude. Totally. Um, but uh, the, so the casting, um, what is her name? Ella, something like that. Ella or Bella, something. The, oh, the act- actress the actor that plays. Snap, crackle, pop. S T get t- no nothing. Sorry, no. continue. Okay. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know what he's talking about. So, someone out that there is singing Ella along. Purnell. Yeah, yeah, Ella crazy. Purnell. There you go. The biggest eyes I've ever seen on a human ever. She is like an anime character come real. Like it's crazy. It's like disturbingly big eyes, and that's and I'm dating Sam who has gigantic eyes. But um, uh, the casting I, I think they, is good on that too because it's like. You know, she's bright eyed in this new world. Exactly. Dude. Yeah, yes. Yeah. She's like, she's like an innocent doll, like, like, you know, whatever. Um, and then the characters, I think, I, I don't want to get into it too much, but um, I, I have this theory that they, they are, um, what are they, affinities or whatever they call them in D and D when you pick like what kind of character. So she, I think she's like, she's lawful good. She always does what she ought to do. And then Maximus always does what he wants to do. And uh, the ghoul always does what he has to do. And I think between those three characters acting in their three ways and with the same environment, it just, uh, I think that's why so many people are resonating because you're either, you f- see yourself in one of these characters or a middle, a mix of two, but you kind of have all three bases covered there. I think it was really well done. I like hmm. what Nick said last week about all the characters having different levels of experience with fallout in the wasteland and, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i when i was watching it i uh I, I saw what he meant i have a bad not a bad opinion i never have any bad opinion name one bad opinion but i have a you said that fucking infinity war was not good dude, dude yeah, fucking, well good job hot take <laughs> yeah <laughs> hot take coming well that's not okay we won't go back to it um <laughs> i really loved the first episode of this so much i like i was in it uh, the world made sense. Uh, the acting was great. I, you know, I entered the world after their vault gets raided, and um, I, I was in it. But then the second episode got like pretty, pretty campy and and corny, and and things started to make a little bit less sense. And I, now that's where I am. By the way, I finished the second episode. Now I don't know if I want to spend my time. I just don't know if it's for me. Does it? Does the world start to make more sense, or does it follow this follow-up thing where it's like I mean, people just randomly come up to you in the desert? How can we sell you anymore, and... dude? How can we sell you anymore? You're the only person on earth that didn't like the show. How much <laughs> more? Oh, how much convincing? Do you want me to fucking uh, balance a ball on my nose and tell you it's good? Like I don't get 
what <laughs> juggle three fallout bobbleheads. <laughs> you know what's funny is everybody so many people have said this to me about this show. It gets really good after the third episode. And it's funny because that's what everybody says about every show all the time. Like it's, and I've said this before on the podcast, if you get three episodes into a show, then it, then it hooks you. Like you're just comfortable in the world and like, you might as well keep walking. You've invested enough to where it feels like you you need to start watching more. And I mean, the show's good, but like at the end of the day, it is a modern TV show. So it's going to play on a lot of cliffhangers, a lot of uh, unanswered questions that, that lead you into each episode. And by the time, you know, you're four episodes in, you've forgotten what the first one, what happened in the first one. And then like, you know, it's going to play all those same tricks that all these shows do, but for what it is, I think it's, it's still pretty enjoyable. I, I do understand what you're saying though. Like the first one I felt did a, a good job was setting everything up and it, they spent a little too much time. I, I felt, especially if, like for such a long episode, I was like, this could have been, it, there was some fat that could have been trimmed off of this. But the second one does kind of uh, get a little weird. And then I don't know. It, but the I, guy's power I, armor gets broken. He shoots off into the sunset. I was like, wait, what? And then the guy, as he's walking, is missing his leg. He walks for how many minutes into the desert? Like six hours, eight hours. And then he's like, oh, I took this cyanide pill. You didn't actually have to try. Just take my hat. I'm like, what? Why did they even do any of that? What's going on here? Yeah. Because well, he you know, went I'm as far you, it's a, as he could. <laughs> it's he went a TV as far as he show. could, and then he's like, I can't do it anymore. People are going to do weird stuff that doesn't make any sense, dude. It's a TV show. <laughs> like, uh, oh, so you're watching it at home, Bobby? Uh, no, I'm, I've been watching it with Pilar, which is... So, uh, I, I'm kind of surprised that... Um, she's enjoying it as much as she is. I I can tell like how much she enjoys something by how often she looks up from her phone. So, yeah. and it, it happens like a pretty good amount of time when we're watching this show. So <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Why did the bullets not go through the brotherhood of steel armor? Oh my God. <laughs> what do you mean? It doesn't. He, I know, but he's fucking exploding. Pe- it goes through like three or four people. He jumps up. He effortlessly, uh, with his hand, I yeah, think dude, dislocates one of the, the fight. one of the one of the steam things that runs on the armor and in, in, in the guy's neck, he just like chops it off with his bare hands. He knows he knows the weak points because he used to drive one. He's bullseyeing people with his gun from across the fuck. He bullseyes three people in quick in succession. How do you shoot somebody in the back from I, in front? I didn't like I didn't like the fight right, scene. Right, I wasn't right, in it. No, I couldn't the, get the, in the it. The fight scenes aren't going to make any any sense at all. It's it's pretty much like a Star Wars movie or show. It's just like sometimes these people are stronger than the other people and sometimes this one's stronger than that one and like right. like it just it doesn't really make any sense and you can poke like a million holes through it. It's You know what? I actually go down that road i hate true i should just watch it and enjoy it like a normal person which i will i'll watch the rest and i'll probably love it but the thing that annoys me most about this show is that bobby watched it before watching star wars and or i think that's what is really to the core yeah. pissing me off yeah. that is an unresolved <laughs> issue that i have to deal with so you know apologies yeah. for My it's hard not to watch the year. show literally everyone's watching fallout and everyone's talking about it yeah, yeah that's true. i gotta stay up to date um as Mila started watching Arcane and I, oh, I was like, oh my God, it's so good. So yeah. Arcane was my show my favorite, my pick of the year two years ago, then Andor last year, and then this year is probably gonna be Fallout. Um Okay. That but, uh, just real quick before we leave this subject. So that guy who plays her brother, guess how old he is? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> do, we, do we know? Yeah, I looked it up. Dude? So Lucy's little brother, Norm, is played by Moises Arias, and he is 30 years old. That was close. I, I thought I would... they found like a 50-year-old little person or something. Like, oh, my just, gosh, dude. I, I seriously thought, because in the close-up, that guy, he's got an old face. What about like, Maximus? How old? I don't know. Because I didn't look him up. I think, he's 22. Supposed to be, I think he's supposed to be like 18 in the show. Or 20. Yeah, he must be in his 20s, I think, that actor. Yeah, Dude, I don't know. That didn't, like, I didn't really notice that. The voice is what really threw me on him. The actor that plays her brother, because the I voice thought, could have been born. The age, right? Or... I don't know. And I also think they're they're casting, because you look at Walton Goggins, and he's just got that old-timey look. Like, he gets cast yeah. in a lot of Westerns and stuff. I think they were trying to do the same thing with the little brother. They're just looking for 
like a, a, a certain look. All right. Does so Aaron Clifton in, Moten. Does he put the blade in the boot? Was that him? Uh, you have to find that, man. Okay. <laughs> no spoilers here, dude. <laughs> Wiki, you got to Wikipedia that. Um, I can't find this guy's age. So it says in the show he's supposed to be like 19 to 21. Yeah. And the actor that plays him is... I can't... Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Well, let me get this con- this uh, podcast. He's 35. Under- 35. 35? Oh. Not just an old face. He is old. <laughs> all right. Uh, let me get this podcast under control. Uh, that's what I've been playing this week. Um, I have a few notes on it. Uh, I know this game's a little old uh, by my standards. But, um, yeah, I bought it for, like, fucking three bucks or something. Uh, so, and it sat there and sat there and finally I played it. Um, I want to, oh, hats off to the marketing, man, because, uh, I think this was a, an Epic exclusive and I remember being like, whoa, this is the killer app, you know, like maybe I should go get fucking Epic so that I could play control. Um, and not just me, like there was a lot of hype around this game, but ultimately, um, I don't think it was worth and that much hype um i'm not even sure i'm going to continue playing it i'm maybe three or four hours in i saw that it's about 11 and a half hours um uh yeah um uh, it's like a little contrived and and affected um it has you know it's hard to do something original these days Um, but it's different to pretend that you're doing something original, I guess. So, uh, you're like in this office building that is under control from some crazy mystical otherworldly force. Uh, it also affects the, um, shape of the building. So there's a little bit of, uh, inception in there a little bit, not much. Um, and, but uh, it doesn't not make it fun. Uh, I, I like that the destructibility in the game is really nice. Like you can shoot most things and it, they'll be affected, which is not something you get anymore. Like, I feel like it was a thing for a little bit and then it's pretty hard to get that. And you can shoot a lot of things and it, and it actually works pretty well. And later on, it's because you get superpowers and uh, the superpowers affect the environment. And, the way that all works is very satisfying. You basically have the force. You can like pull things towards you and then throw them, throw them at things. Is it because of midichlorians Uh, that move through? uh, Yeah, I was going to say, well, (laughs) either that or half-life too. Like, uh, yeah, we know that this is fun. Uh, it was done pretty well. And, um, the, um, the way that it's implemented is yeah, done pretty well. So like if you're pulling something towards you, it doesn't just pull that one item it it'll pull that one item and all the little things around it like just like the debris like um, the paint from the wall and panels from the wall and piece of carpet and so it really feels like you know you you're pulling at the whole area not this just one thing right. and it, uh it really helps the immersion there uh, but you know like i said i'm three or four hours in i've seen three enemy types and that includes a boss so two enemy types, really. Um, so it's just not I guess hard enough for you. Like, I, I, what are you saying? I don't know what you're saying. I'm I'm in the fucking office building with two other kind of things, right? And, and there's not enough variety. Not enough variety, be and it's you know it's kind of bland. Everything's gray. It's an office building, you know. Um, but maybe it'll get better. Maybe I'll keep playing. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of full motion video. Is it, that's what you call it when you, it's in a video game, right, Bobby? Is that what they used to call it? FMV. Yeah, um, yeah. They they have a lot of that, and a, a lot of it they superimpose on the screen. And it's a pretty cool in fe- effect. Like when somebody's talking to you in your brain, like uh, video is playing overlaid on your screen, and it's you know you're seeing video game graphics and video graphics at the same time pretty cool uh i mean i've seen it before but uh this game uses it almost exclusively as their special effects um and they did it well but you know i don't know i'm 50 50 on this if you can't tell yeah Hmm. what what got you down this route it just seems like a random you know 
thing to it was like to three try bucks out. and like i said that uh, i was convinced that it was a killer app back at, or uh, like not convinced but like it's the way they were advertising it was just really well done the advertising behind it but uh, after playing it it's uh, it was uh, a really popular Netflix. game when it came out, but I remember yeah. a lot of people did not like it too. It, I yeah. wouldn't say it was like divisive or anything, but I just, I think there were a good amount of people that felt like it wasn't worthy of the praise. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when does that not happen? But yeah, totally. 11 and a half hours. So you're basically almost halfway through and it's not really hooking you. Yeah, man. There's way too many games that yeah. you would love to put time into just be a completionist about this one if it you're, you know yeah completionist like is like 28 hours for a full full playthrough is it not so like a linear problem. narrative experience or is it more like open world and there's a bunch of stuff that you can optionally do um yeah there's a bunch of, there's side quests i guess uh I, only, I just got my first side quest i think and um yeah it's an office building you go into an area like you go into the executive area and you cleanse it of baddies by cleansing it. And then uh, now you can fast travel to the last area that you just did. And then you go to the next area and you cleanse that area. And now you can fast travel to the last two. And that's just how that's the place. Even your voice is. isn't impressed. You're like, hey, yeah, I'm, just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to like. Emilio yeah. did not like control, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Uh, moving on to On the Radar. So these are games that have caught our attention or games that we're excited to play. And Bobby's speaking about, you know, all these theme games. What do you got? I've got Prison Architect 2, which I didn't realize was coming out, but apparently this has been announced for a while and it recently got delayed until uh, September. Apparently they're having some technical issues um, the game is not running as well as they would like it to on the minimum hardware specifications, but um, I guess they plan to have that ready to go in September. Uh, so yeah, I didn't even realize that this was even coming out. I love the first Prison Architect. It always reminds me of when they first started doing uh, early access. It was one of the, when they first came out with early access on Steam, there were a handful of games and Prison Architect was one of them. Um, it was like a this, darling. It was like people were like, oh, this thing can work. Like, cause it yeah, was still like good. Yeah. yeah. Because they, they had a real bad run with green light. If any, anyone remembers that on steam, that really didn't go well for them. It was a nice idea that they would open up, uh, the steam platform to like anybody, you know, even people who were making very small games and then other people could see them upvote them and that would help them get developed. But yeah, it just, um, it, it did not work out. So then they moved over to Steam Early Access. And um, God, what were the other games? It was Prison Architect 2, uh, the the one where they go into Kerbal Space Program. Oh, and yeah. Like, and like some other ones, but like really good looking games. And th that ended up being really popular. And um, yeah, and here we are like years and years later with a, uh, with a sequel. Now, the, the first thing you're going to notice about the sequel is they completely changed the visual style it's now 3d so the first prison architect had that top down 2d um style and i actually interviewed the guy who who did uh did the art direction for that game and he made his own game academia school simulator if you look at that game it looks exactly the same it kind of plays the same but Ryan it's Sumo, in a school right? yeah who's and now with paradox also... interactive by the way who publishes this this new version i don't know if there's oh, really any relevancy well, to him being there but yeah yeah and i wouldn't imagine so because if he was um the one who designed that the look of that original game and that's what's completely different about this i imagine they they're using a completely different engine and and going of course, a, a, yeah yeah different people working on bobby on the do you graphics. like the 3d change like does that excite you that now there's two levels instead of top down you know you can only have one level in these giant prisons I, first of all <laughs> nothing work. excites bobby no, I think it I think it's a good change. Like I think okay, you can cool. do a lot more with that. Um I don't mind the 2D like real plain look that he, that was used in the first prison oh, I, I don't mind that at all. Academia. It's so simple to yeah. manage. But yeah. Yeah, it's really easy to figure stuff out. 
Um, I, but I'm wondering what's different about this game. Like, what are they going to change from the first one? And they didn't have a whole lot. Uh, they had a lot of stuff on their Steam page, and it was all just kind of very nebulous and hard to understand and just sounded like the usual um, spiel you get when they're trying to promote a game. It's just like all very vague talk. But one thing that stood out to me is that inmates form unique relationships that affect their behavior. So usually you're the people in your park, in your your prison or whatever you're managing, they react to the different things that you do. Um, but in this one, I guess something new they're trying is uh, uh, these the inmates are going to form relationships and that's going to also change their behavior, which I don't know, that's probably been done, but maybe, maybe they've got a a new way of doing it. I, I don't know. You never really know what these types of games until you actually play it. But it could be worth checking out. I I was surprised it's only four months away. Like this is coming out pretty soon here. So it's something that I'll keep an eye on. I really like um, the development crew because I feel like they have like a like a loose cannon over there like, and a milio over there because uh, every once in a while they'll do some crazy shit. Like they went from, you know, a prison management and construction sim or whatever and then they were like hey what if you play from the prisoner's perspective and you try to escape same game but just completely different you try to escape from the thing that you fucking just built that's fucking sweet did they do that yeah they did that and then they fucking did a vr a vr now you can play prison Arch architect of vr uh trying okay, to escape cool. in vr and, and you know just like, yeah, let's fucking throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Hmm. I'm, I'm, ex oh, I feel like I'm dipping my toe in a hot tub very slowly, checking out this Steam page. I'm, I'm worried because the switch to 3D, um, I don't know. I think a big part of why I like the original Prison Architect was because you have thousands of people on your screen eventually like your prison gets huge but it's all very like intuitive and simple to manage and sometimes with 3d games like i have to look at the level of my building and do the walls clip in the right way and like is that going to still be easy to manage and run my part or maybe the scale will just be a lot smaller you know maybe instead of a thousand inmates you know it'll max out at like a hundred and then maybe it's fine i don't um, know man i just saw a picture of an entire city so who knows? <laughs> they hooked this go. game up to city skylines. This yeah. is, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, content warning: Have you guys heard about this? Oh yeah, dude. This is like that other one that was blowing up, Lethal Company. Yeah, it's like Lethal Company, right? But the idea is that you go down into this like, so yeah, like Lethal Company, uh, four player co op, right? You go down into this like other world or whatever, the upside down or whatever you want to call it. And you are supposed to film each other doing crazy shit and scary shit. And the scarier, the better. But obviously, sometimes you die uh, trying to get this footage. And the whole thing is you're trying to go viral on uh, SpookTube um, <laughs> with, with your video camera, um, which I think is so good. I, I think the premise is so good because obviously, if this game is even halfway worth its salt, people are going to get great fucking footage out of this you know what i mean like um, it's like a game meant to market itself so exactly easily. Yeah. and who cares like sure are you cheating okay but if you make a fun game and the videos the videos and the game are fun then who get hurt, who got hurt there and for eight dollars 92 percent positive reviews with uh ten thousand reviews uh, like I, I i applaud them i, I feel like they I feel like they uh, found a warp in video game development. You know what I mean? Or at least marketing. Yeah, the marketability of the game is like <laughs> one of the one of the gameplay features, which is always good. I think a couple other games have have tried something similar. I'm wondering these people. Uh, looks like there's four developers from. Yeah, like, those, are, those are the screen names, dude. <laughs> they made this yeah. game for themselves, dude. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if they're they were. I don't know any of the history. I'm just speculating, but they see Lethal Company come out and they have this yeah. game ready in the bushes. It's not quite done yet. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck, Lethal Company is having this moment. Is anyone going to want to play our game? You know, like, mm -hmm. like, it is, it, are we just going to be out 
played into oblivion because not enough attention will be on our game. And then Lisa Company had its moment. And then this game came out and it's like, I have Whiplash. Everyone's like, Lethal Company, no, now go play Content Warming. And I feel like they really um, capitalized on the attention that Lethal Company had in a good way. So, I mean, it looks fun. Where are you going to play right. it? And they yeah. were giving the game away for free for a while, too. Oh, did they? Oh, cool. Content Warning? Yeah. Well, oh, Somebody posted it in our Discord. <laughs> well, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the problem with Lethal Company was it had the perfect uh mix of things to be crazy and wild and the problem is you almost had to tell other people what happened because usually you only have your first person perspective and the whole story cannot be told by that perspective but now you have four camera angles trying to film the same thing and you can clip together some well i haven't seen any i should have right before the show but i have time but i'm sure there's some great clips on fucking youtube you know? Oh yeah. Do you I've think getting... more people are playing Lethal Company right now or playing content. Oh, we're gonna play the game. Ooh, play I the like game? I like this game. Uh well, I'm kind of cheating because I have the Steam page of content warning open. Um, I'm gonna go with Lethal Company. All right. I'm gonna go with content warning. That's uh, Lethal Company. Lethal oh, Company has twenty nine thousand people playing. Content warning has about fourteen or fifteen thousand people playing right now. I mean, okay. just judging a book by its cover, it, this doesn't look like it has, it doesn't look as put together as the other game does. And that game's not super put together either. But uh, yeah, it just looks, yeah, not super technical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's like a progression system in content warning like there right. is in Lethal Company. You know what, the, mean, be the best content is getting Bobby in one of these games. Like the yeah. what happened oh, when boy. you guys got together... <laughs> He, him getting frustrated with us having fun. That's basically what happens. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> Running headfirst into turrets. into turrets? I laughed so hard when I watched that clip over. Oh, it was so good. Where can uh, they find that clip, Christian? Uh, they can find it on Instagram and TikTok with other clips, uh, but not too many others. And that one's kind of a gem. I think it's pretty funny. Yeah. That that could have been our OnlyFans content. Yep. You guys are so fucking old. It's I uh, just. It's called SpookTube. <laughs> oh, dude, we're trying to capitalize on the new, the hot new thing. All right, everybody's gonna have OnlyFans accounts now. Oh, TikTok's getting banned, right? Uh, they just passed a bill. Well, in the U.S. Yes, in all countries that don't believe in freedom. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, Getting I just read that today. Okay. I feel like I keep reading that. I don't know what's happening with it. I mean, yeah, I guess it is kind of all the news like about Chinese him. spyware or something. Yeah, it's about that, and it's about uh, that guy who lit himself on fire at the Trump trial. Yeesh. Oh. What a way to go! I, I haven't heard uh, about that. I'm gonna I look that up about right that after either. this. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna talk about Mind Over Magic, which is like a a dream game of mine because you design and manage uh, a school of magic it's by clay entertainment or it's published by clay entertainment and just scrolling through it reminds me a lot of oxygen not included which was their mm. other kind of colony semi game uh but you know like other clay games it's going to be a mixture of resource management and like adventure questing and it's like kind of like harry potter in that way because you have your group of children wizards and they run into shenanigans inside your magic school they defeat monsters and they kind of explore these underground caverns uh, underneath your school and progressively run into harder and harder monsters that get you better and better loot to upgrade your your school you're playing dumbledore you're playing dumbledore yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if the... It's an interesting question. In universe, what is the purpose of Hogwarts? Like, does Hogwarts make money as a private wizarding school? Or do they just serve the community? You know, how serve are they funded? the community? They just seem to traumatize kids. I mean, ha! what's going on? Well, I, uh, I get, they never get into it, but I assume they also teach you how to keep the muggles at bay like let's let's use our powers responsibly and not reveal ourselves right. muggle management yeah muggle yeah okay yeah let's let's protect our whole society by learning how to use magic in in a proper way i can believe that 
Um, do do you think like Dumbledore gets a salary? I mean, it gets well, room it's and tough, board. right? It's tough when you can just make anything you want pretty much appear. I don't know. It doesn't matter, man. These kids' books, like children, don't think of that stuff. Like, yeah. They don't really think of like how you have to like provide for yourself and live. So in all these like young adult or child books, like they never address that. You know, like is Dumbledore getting paid? Does he have a four hundred one k? Like what's <laughs> What's his retirement? What's his retirement look like? Like he's way past the age of retirement. Why is he still working? But yeah. Yeah. This leads me to another question, which uh, this game seems to have a lot of tunnels. Like that seems to be like a key gameplay pillar, these tunnels that the kids explore. Uh, I feel like Hogwarts should have more tunnels. It's a school that's been around for how long? Since the beginning of Wizardry? Uh, excuse me. You only know the Harry Potter legacy. Like all throughout there. I'm sure there's... There, that was one kid going through his four years there. Imagine all the other thousand kids, dude. They all had their own adventures. Or died. Or died. Yeah, yeah they die in those <laughs> tunnels. Yeah. You're so right, dude. <laughs> dude, I, in, in Mind Over Magic, the, the game, I want there to be like parent-teacher interviews. And like, oh, my, my son was in your potion-making class. And, um, you know, how's he doing? <laughs> uh, actually, he decided to quest... Uh, three tunnels down and got killed by a gargoyle. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, dude, this looks. Do- I love the look out of it. I love the cross section of the place. Yeah. Um. I, I, one one screen. Uh, the third screenshot looks like maybe you're building the place. Totally. Yeah. It's a oh, building cool. and and management and questing. I don't know. These clay games always like. Uh, mix a couple things together and see what happens. I feel like they have a really, um, a really good creative creative bent to all their games. Uh, I'm sending not... this over to Amanda right now. Yeah, this will be I fun. She's it's currently it. in early access for twenty seven dollars Canadian, which I feel like is a fine price for a fine game. It has ninety to ninety three percent positive reviews on Steam. Uh, kind of like a lot of clay games are very highly reviewed. You know, they they just make good shit, guys. So, well, over magic, clay is publishing it. They're not developing it, right? Yeah, but to put their name on the front there, I think they have to have <laughs> from the um, guys that brought you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do you guys do what I do? Like when you see something that would you think that would fit somebody perfectly, you send it directly to them. Do you guys of do course. that? Yeah, I mean, I don't get shit from you, so I assume you guys already know about it. Like, I don't need. I, I'm like the last person to know about any game. Well, I only I do would... it except for Emilio. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked, dude. I was shocked that so I've sent uh, your wife two messages my entire life, uh, Christian. Mm-hmm. I hope I had pre per- 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 permission. One was uh, for she a T-shirt. Need permission that... from a permit a t-shirt that she should buy for you right and she's like okay. i already saw this like i've seen it a million times and i was like oh cool uh if if the algorithm chose you for this shirt then and i chose you then i think i did my job but anyway um i sent her um all the new info on uh super giants uh hades 2 and she seems to be so excited like you had never told her anything about it we wa- the last thing we did is we watched the announcement uh, at the Game Awards. And that's the last thing. That was our last oh. contact. But that makes sense, dude, because for the last... When did you send her that message? Because for the last like four or like five, five days... days ago. She's, dude, she's been playing Hades for, since oh. five days ago. Because there's, there's, so um, <laughs> there's, 40, there's 40 minutes of gameplay uh, that the devs uh, posted. I haven't you don't know about it. See, I assume that you, I was going to send it to you, and then I was like, "Oh, he already knows. That's what he does for a living." So I was like, "I'll send it directly to Re on the off chance that he hasn't mentioned to her yet." And there we no, go. apparently, I'm not making a very good living. I haven't watched the 40 minute. Um, that is exciting, though. When is it supposed to come out in early access? I know that's like a question from the hip, but is that coming? I don't know. Early access. Sign up for Hades 2 technical test five days ago. Okay, so a private early access through Epic. Okay. Cool. Maybe Rian should sign up. Guys, that's all for Mind Over Magic. That's all for On the Radar. We're at an exciting segment. 
you know, some have said this segment guides them in their weekly listening to this podcast. They love listening to this sound that everyone has been guessing. If they guess that sound right, if you, the listener, who I'm talking to right now, guess that sound right, you could win $110 because that's how much is in the pot. Guys. In Steam credit, by the way. In Steam credit, yeah. In participating (laughs) countries. You you have to be within earshot. Kerplakistan. <laughs> Kerplakistan. Um, you can email pixelshitshow at gmail.com to guess that sound if you think you know. Uh, every week I choose a random answer, and this week I choose a guess by Berkham J. Uh, he is a patron, and he has two guesses here. He says, inside the freezer, hitting a valve mm. in Black Mesa, or inside the freezer, hitting the wall in Black Mesa. Mm. I'm just going to pull the room. Bobby Emilio, how do you feel about these guesses? Could it's kind of loud for a freezer, but I do like, I, you know, I like the Black Mesa. I'm, I'm in the Black Mesa camp. Yeah, I feel like it would be something in that game. Inside a freezer, though, that seems too specific. Like, I don't... Well, I feel... apparently Christian wants fucking what pixels were moving. Like, he wants it exactly... <laughs> I don't know. If this is right, then I would be more surprised that Christian picked this. Like, I'm going to put it in a specific location. Okay. Well, I don't know, guys. I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news. Hey! Jay, you fucking got it. You know, it wasn't, I thought that hard. It is any sound. I would have accepted any sound of the crowbar hitting either. Uh, a pipe or a valve in anything in Black Mesa. I don't think it had to be specifically in the freezer room, but the steam you hear is when you get next to any pipe and valve, that is the background noise in Black Mesa. That is the slight hissing you're you're hearing. I said that like six weeks ago, so I'm pretty happy with myself. Yeah, Emilio, you can said- actually steal this money from Berkham J. <laughs> <laughs> I said hitting a pipe in Black Mesa. I'm pretty sure a, a steam pipe. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, awesome, dude. Fuck. Uh, no, oh shit. Now we have to pay. Uh, I was happy and now I'm sad. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to. So I, I know, I remember that I, uh, I contributed $25 to that. So Bobby, I'll send that over to you on, uh, on a bed or something. All right. Sponsored by Emilio. Guess this sound. Are we doing, are we doing a new sound guys? Can we figure yes, that out? And the new sound starts at $25 because I will commit to that again. Starting so at five dollars is just ridiculous, dude. Yeah, but the, we're gonna get up there. We're gonna fucking yeah. get up there. I mean, nobody's gonna guess it on the first couple of times. So, Bobby, do you think it's better that um that we don't know what it is? Oh uh, yeah, I think it's better, right? It Probably. plays better. Yeah, I feel like it does. Yeah, like until it's a sound we know. do know, and then we just have to pretend like we don't. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you guys would not pretend. You just would guess it right away, and then or maybe the one of us it. finds a sound and gives it to Christian, and we play it that way. Now a new person knows. We can do a lot of things. I have a sound yeah. in the wings, but I don't want to shove it down anyone's throats. If you guys have a great sound, let's open this segment up to to everyone. Uh, An illusion. So, I guess you heard it right here, folks. We're going to be bringing the sound back next episode. There's going to be a new sound. Some of you joined the Discord to give feedback on on the game. Uh, I listen to you. I hear you. You know, <laughs> your your voices aren't aren't in vain. There's going to be some changes to the rules that I think will make it uh, a little bit more fair and and exciting, and maybe even help people guess uh, a little a little quicker. But the key thing will be the sound still has to be specific. I don't need the exact pixels, but I need generally the game and what's happening to make the sound. So just keep that in mind for, for, for the future. Don't send me CSGO. Don't send me Deep Rock Galactic. Those things will, will not work. Okay. Little do you know that this was all a ploy to get your emails for the weekly newsletter. We're going to be sending that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, by guessing you opt in through Section 5 to weekly pictures uh, to Bobby's OnlyFans. Uh, Ooh. Is just pictures of his new server room. It's actually nothing that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know, dude. I feel like your cat could have an OnlyFans. Someone must do that with pets, right? There's got to be a pet OnlyFans. Not sexually explicit stuff. Again, let me clarify. Right. I, and I think it's not... I'm sorry. No, keep going. It's not... Well, what? it's not pictures of the entire server room. It's actually really very close in <laughs> yeah, shots specific. of of OnlyFans. Oh... Mm. I hope that's the reaction everyone hears when they hear that. Ah. Do, do, want... do, do. Chum. Cool. Hey, Bobby. Listener questions. We're there. We've got a lot of them. First one from Days. For the Magic players, which set over the years has been your favorite and why? Well, uh, you, uh, let's say for Nick when he's here. Oh, God. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. All right. Next question from Duder McBadass. With the success of Fallout on Amazon, what is your opinion on this article? And oh, he geez. links to an article. This is an article, but it's like three and a half paragraphs long. And it just uh, talks about how despite the success of the show, Bethesda says they're not, um, don't expect to Fallout 5 anytime soon, basically. Yeah, because they're working on their Skyrim. I mean, their um, Elder Scrolls game. Right yeah, now. Elder Scrolls, Starfield. They, they got other stuff going on. However, I, I don't know. Let me read the rest of his question. It seems that there's a split between rapid development cycles like Call of Duty and franchises that take time between sequels. Do you think Bethesda can avoid the disaster that was Fallout 76 and change course? Or do you think the money grab microtransaction landscape will overrule sound game design and force another half-baked product i would oh like God, to dude. think that starfield's harsh landing will influence their next game i i feel like it's hard to separate my intuition with my hope right but uh i do feel like the next they're gonna go for skyrim they're gonna go for the success of Skyrim. They're going to try to re uh, create that. Like, let's just make money from making a fantastic game. So a huge game, long lifespan. But yeah. are they coming out with a Call of Duty game every year still? They're taking a little more time than that, Yeah, I right? think they're taking a little more time, Bobby. It used to be every single November, but I feel like that has kind of gone away a little bit in general. I, I don't know. Maybe it hasn't, but just... I, I don't notice it as much. It seems like it's really hard to make a big game every year and get people to care about the new version of it. So I, yeah. I feel like in general, the industry is moving towards more spaced out releases, but I could be totally wrong about that. They had a fucking run there though, right? Of like 15 years of just, what do you call it? Um, planned obsolescence. Like, yeah, last year's was great, but why would you play this when... 2005 is even better like, yeah well you got to factor in the console too because that's where they're making most of their money pc is really just an afterthought I, at least with call of duty yeah, um, yeah yeah bethesda may be the same thing i don't know they all their games are on console right they release right alongside pc mm -hmm. on console yeah i don't but, know anything special about bethesda but you know they i i do know they make a lot of game like they made death loop right they made mm -hmm. Redfall. Like, like they made uh, these games. I, did they make them or did they publish them? I think they made Red... Oh, they might have published Redfall. They're involved in a lot of games. Maybe I should specify. Yeah. And I think they do spend quite a bit of time on their flagship titles. What struck me as interesting in Starfield was that when data miners went into the game, they found all these more hardcore systems that people were like, why wasn't this in the final product? I think, you know, maybe an unpopular opinion, but meddling with something, uh, time doesn't necessarily equal, time spent on development doesn't necessarily equal the amount of fun you're gonna get in the final product, especially when these companies mm -hmm. maybe get bigger and bigger, you're getting kind of, I don't know what to call it, this George Lucas type meddling, where it, it, the final product is actually suffering from the time that you spend on it and mm. the amount of testing it goes through internally and stuff like that. Not all the time, obviously, you can still have buggy games that uh, people find frustrating at launch, but I hope that they stick with their core development principles from the time that they start development to the time they wrap development so that 
we don't get this Starfield situation where it feels like maybe they switched course halfway and the product suffered because of it. Does that make any sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think they could do any wrong with Fallout, honestly. I mean, well, Fallout 76, yeah. But if they just made like Fallout 4 and added a, a cat or something, people would be like, <laughs> oh my God, it's the best thing ever. But <laughs> they must be... They must be aware of the effect the TV show is having and how like there's a surge of people going back and playing old Fallout games now. Like they they must at least be like, eh, we should probably get going on on something Fallout related because you got to yeah. strike when the iron's hot. Like people imagine if the TV show co-released with a Fallout game, everybody would be playing that game right now. Yeah. But then both of them would have sucked because they would have had to try to meet that deadline. Well, I don't know what Bethesda's doing with the TV show. I mean, I don't, I think they just like, someone else is making that, right? They just lend their name to it. Yeah, sure. But, you know, you're trying, either one, one of them would have suffered from meeting. Yeah, I mean, they would have had, to, they would have had to have this game like in development a long, long time yeah. ago. But, you know, I just. I, I have high expectations for the next, um, Elder Scrolls game, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I don't think there's been a bad Elder Scrolls game yet, so. Yeah. All right, next What's question your, from, a what's up? Real quick, what's everyone's least favorite Elder Scroll game? I've only played one, so I, I played two, so I can't really. Skyrim. I've only played Oblivion? Skyrim. Skyrim, Skyrim and Morrowind's the third one and Oblivion's yeah. the fourth one. I right? believe so, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion didn't take from me for some reason. I know it's beloved by a lot of people, but Morrowind and Skyrim were just... Yeah, you know. well, I went, I played Skyrim and then I went back and played Oblivion. And so, like, yeah, I just... No, I, I definitely preferred Skyrim more. Um, next question from AJ Casper. What is your favorite controller to use? Uh, about a year and a half ago, I was looking... You know, all, all my Xbox controllers become became kind of obsolete because they were Xbox 360 controllers. They weren't obsolete, but they weren't doing something that I needed them to do. Oh, I think it was Bluetooth connectivity. And so I was like, all right, it's time to look at a new one. And I had uh, looked at um, the Xbox, like, elite controller which is like 150 dollars and i had handled one i think john has one and um eat less beef has one and i handled i was like okay this is obviously high quality you can feel how nice it is right and then so i go along and i and i'm doing some of my research and i'm like okay what is the competitor to this and it's just the the playstation controller like the regular one and it's like really close like you know 50 50 all the way down but this one's 60 bucks and i'm like all right well if it's that close and it's half less than half the price i'm gonna go with the playstation controller and i've enjoyed it ever since i i think it's a great controller so i would say the place playstation mm -hmm. dual shock i know there's a newer one i think it's called dual sense but um i don't know it, how much better it is i always felt like there's too many buttons on a playstation controller I think they all have the same amount now, right? <laughs> no, dude. Well, I use the Xbox 360 controller still. Like, that's just, I don't know. I've never had a need to upgrade from that. But yeah, dude, the, the new PlayStation controllers, they got like 11 trigger buttons. <laughs> 11. Yeah, you're right. Oh, did I lose? Do, do they really you have 11? Me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, oh, I have the PS, PS4 controller. Uh, it has two triggers on each. So four triggers in total. You're saying okay. 11 on the new one, like maybe one down here. <laughs> right. and no, one it's here. true. I have it right here. So it's one, two, three, four. And then there's, I thought there was other ones down here, but I guess yeah, not. Yeah, like the bottom ones. Empty no, space. It's four. it's four. Oh, no. Dude, you got I a thought different there was. one. Then. Yeah, there's controllers that have the ones below, too. Yeah, yeah there, there are. Too many, too many buttons, man. I just like, let's go back to the Nintendo with the A and the B button, or maybe even the Atari, just a joystick and one button. That's all says, you need. Says the guy with a, a, control, uh, a 
keyboard that has 150 keys with zero markings on what any of them do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you know, the keyboard, you don't use all the keys. <laughs> I like how you laughed um, uh, as if you were receiving praise. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bobby, do you, um, does your like A or W have a dot so you could feel? Which one um, it yeah, it's got the marker keys on the oh, okay. J and the um, ASDF. Yeah, the F and J keys have the, they, they've got a name for those. I can't remember what they are, like the markers or something. But yeah, uh, no, I can tell where my WASD is because they're all worn down. I get, need to get new keycaps, but I don't need to, man. I don't understand why people need to look at keyboards. Like it's, you've been typing them on, typing on them your whole life. Like you'd be yeah. surprised. Most people like look at that and they're like in awe that I have nothing printed on my keyboard, but I'm just like, just try it. You'd be surprised, man. And they sit down, they start typing and it's actually, it's a little weird at first, but then like right away, I, I've been using the blank keyboard since like, God, 2007 or eight or something. Like you, you learn it really quick and then you just, you never yeah. need to go back. See the yeah. skeptical face. On you both never of need our to faces, pay dude. for printed no, keys. It's again. a humble brag, dude. <laughs> It it's is. a humble brand. You are paying to not have them painted on. Yeah. Well, yes. it forces you to learn touch typing a lot, a lot better. Hmm. All okay. right. Next question from Warconius. We got both Sony and Microsoft publishing their games on PC, cross save and cross progression. And now Sony even awarding trophies on PC games with no console required. Are we witnessing PC supremacy? Is the war over? I don't know. I don't. I don't like to engage mm. in the console wars or whatever they're called. But I think if you are someone who engages in that, careful what you wish for, dude. Because I think we're reaching a point where there's going to be no difference between a PC and a console. And the hardware side of building your own PC is the side that's going to suffer. People are going to just get consoles. They're going to work like PCs. And everything you love and hold dear about building your PC will become more expensive and out of reach. So yeah. at what cost? I feel like pre-builds are already becoming a lot more popular. So I don't know, man. I, I see like all the platforms just kind of merging. Yeah, there's way less them, us. It's way more just us now. Uh, we are just getting along now. Because <laughs> uh, everything releases on the same day almost for everything almost except for so rockstar for, <laughs> so for uh, yeah and sony uh sony games but at least we're getting the sony games now it's just nintendo mm -hmm. that's the last holdout um i did post something that was like um developers ranked by metascore and nintendo was number one uh although they have their division so one of the divisions ranks super high like 97 percent average but um, other than that, like, yeah, everything comes out all the time for everybody, which is great. It's kind of set. Uh, or people being able to play more types of games easier, I don't think is a bad thing. But in a way, it's kind of like there used to be these interesting subcultures and there still is with like Nintendo and the Switch and all the games on it. And that is kind of that boat has sailed. And now everything is like homogenized into this one big bucket. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't dissected how which, I feel about it. Which begs the question, why are we a PC gaming podcast? If that's all true. <laughs> why are we a PC gaming podcast if we always talk about TCGs? Yeah, <laughs> that's the real yeah. question. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Lorcana, buy your packs today. Yeah, you can play Lorcana on the PC too. All right. Pixelborn qualifies as a PC game technically. Yeah. Do, you play, uh, uh, do you know about that? uh chris i mean i know you know about it but have you tried it that's how bobby got me hooked he said download oh. this hey hey uh download this and download this file and copy and paste this code, code. <laughs> yeah <laughs> lorcana any lorcana cards you want no it was actually awesome that's what you know that was my first experience playing lorcana and yeah that was that was the opening of the trench coat that was the crack that was the first the first of the drug that is lorcana sorry bobby <laughs> or conius has another part of this question uh, he does. He says this year's DLG con is virtual. Seriously. Where is it hosted this year? St. Louis, Minneapolis, Detroit, Billings. I don't, I don't know where Billings is. Billings. I, 
uh, Idaho? Billings, Idaho. Uh, yeah, Billings, Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> Just made it up. Don't Idaho. Go I have no idea. I, dude, um, I feel bad for Idaho. I forget their estate sometimes. I'm just like, oh, yeah, Idaho. That exists. The like, city of Montana. Christian, you might, I think you might know this. Uh, you might like this little fun fact. Uh, cartographers and map makers used to put fake cities on their thing so they'd know that it was theirs before it was like um, stolen and copied. You right. Know? Yeah. Like, but then sometimes those fake cities became real cities because enough people went there to go see what the fuck's going on and you know a wagon wheel <laughs> broke and then became a general store That's it's crazy yeah just imagine all these guys are you here for billings you're you're here for billings it's like an empty field they're like fuck we're all here for billings i guess i guess this we are is billings it. we yeah. are billings. I, I think therefore i am dude yeah oh that's awesome that is a fun fact thank you for sharing yeah um uh, uh, so what is the question? Yes, it is actually virtual unless, I don't know, somebody who owns an insurance company wanted to sponsor the next one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it at the last minute, change it somewhere else. But up until then, it is a virtual DLG con. And um, we will start putting something together soon, I guess. Yeah. yeah, we should start getting some details on, yeah. uh, on that in the near future. All right. Next question from Atom. He asks, what is one mistake in any game that cost you hours of lost time? Mm. I think we've all lost a f save file, right, at some point? Yeah, and you know what I've done probably more than once is – save a game back when you had the quick save button i don't know if they really use that too much oh, anymore. i guess yeah. they do yeah they, they still have the quick save button yeah but um you auto load you quick load you quick, save. Of quick save no I, well yeah you could hit one or the other but i would make the mistake of quick saving right before i died somewhere and then i get stuck in an infinite death loop and i don't have any saves before that so this was a problem in dark forces too because when you quick save it just overwrites your last quick load so you really only have one so i had gotten in the habit every time i play that game is i just do a a manual save at the beginning of each level and uh, that way, if something happens, I can at least go back to the start of the level. But that's funny that you have that, dude, because uh, I've never had that issue because I always make sure I'm completely safe before I like I want to make sure I have enough potions or whatever it is, like before I do a quick save and then I'll go into the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's never happened to me. But I have hit the wrong button several, 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 several times. Like, ooh, finally got past that thing and then hit a button and it quick saves me right before that thing. Uh, that's the worst. Hmm. I, can, I think so. When I play on like extremely like like the highest difficulty on Dark Forces Two, I use the quick save and quick load buttons. Like I might as well bind them to my left and right uh, mouse <laughs> click, dude. Like I use them that often, yeah. and it's hey. just like running. I play it like Hotline Miami, basically. Yeah. So I think that's where the issue tends to come up. What about and, you, Christian? Maybe, well, maybe that's good. You know, some extra buttons on a controller could be binded theoretically if there, <laughs> if there was some. I'm just throwing spitball. Uh, I can track my mistake. Uh, the year is 1998. A young Christian lives in a small northern Alberta town, and his mom, honestly, blessed is, is her parenting ways she's barely keeping it together at this point she has three kids and another one on the way you know she's an amazing woman and to pass the time get away from all this hecticness she has a uh, computer time where she plays pharaoh and uh, this is time where she's not supposed to be bothered this is private mom time i'm supposed to do something else and that's okay except i sneak uh she had drawn this curtain she curtained off a section of the room and i just look my little eyes past the curtain, silent as a mouse, to what she was doing. Uh, she was playing City Builder, Pharaoh. Uh, and ever since then, I was enamored with video games. And I've cost, it has costed me not just hours of my life, years of my life. <laughs> that was the first mistake. If I had gone, played Legos, yeah. 
played with my bears, did something else, went outside for God's sakes. I never would have lost all this fucking time. I wouldn't have known yeah, you guys. It, it would have it would have found you some way or another. You think? Yeah, Listen, I think you, so you work in the industry too, so you can kind of I don't know. You wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for that. You think well, of it that way? One. I'm sure I would have found. I'm sure I would have found. Correlation one job. does not mean causation, right? Um. Uh, so for me, uh, I know I said one thing, but I'm going to say it. Well, I was bouncing off of Bobby, but um, so I, I wanted to look up the year so I could say I want to do a thing when Emilio was a young, I don't know how old I was, but in, <laughs> in 1998, um, I thought I had done everything I could do to kill Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. And uh, there is a point in the game where it says, are you sure you want to embark on this journey? Because there's no turning back. And I'm like, Psh, I'm killing everything I've ever touched. There's no problem. <laughs> and so, yeah, I fucking, I s saved my final save and then went to fight Sephiroth and found, found myself wanting. And uh, I could not go back into the game world and get stronger. I mean, I think that's a design flaw in the game, but... Uh, you know, 18-year-old, 17-year-old Emilio did not understand what the hell was going on. It sucked. Oh, I mean, I guess I could have had a hard save before then, but I didn't for whatever reason. That's rough. <sighs> Is that, it? For, that, was the that was the payment I paid. That was the cost I paid to learn that you need to have multiple save files. Hmm. It's a high cost. Now that there's... Now that there's some time between, uh, you know, this deeply traumatic event and and now, do you do you look back at that experience as you know instructive, uh, formative, and positive, or does it still wound you? Well, I think the industry learned, right, that to not <laughs> from your mistakes specifically. Yeah, from they must have had a they must have had enough complaints because now. Like it just you have a ton of save files. Every time you save, it makes a yeah. new one, and you don't yeah. have to override yeah. the old one. No, but the save systems in be, old games suck, dude. They, yeah, the old they've one gotten a lot better. The default was overriding the old one. Now I'm like, okay, at eleven fifty nine, that's when I was really powerful. At twelve oh six, that's when the shit started going down. Let me go to the eleven fifty nine. That sounds like the better choice. I'm imagining you on like some sort of Square Enix training montage where they like <laughs> interview you and they they like go through your history. You tell them about the game and they're like, "Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for sharing this, so our games can be better of your yeah. experience." <laughs> <laughs> with, yeah. with tissues in front of me and stuff, dude. Yeah. Uh, when you said that, uh, it reminded me. So when I was playing EverQuest, um, I was I, I was not one of the I wasn't the reason we were one of the top guilds i was the friend of the leader and so i just happened to be inside of it i was not as good as these people or as dedicated and i was dedicated so um anyway they flew including my friend who was the leader sony flew them all out for like a, a fucking gathering of the guild masters to like talk about the game and how they can improve it when does that happen anymore dude i feel like Oh, I think that happens all, all the time. Oh, not, not in physical. Yeah, I feel right. like feedback from the core members of a community is like something lots of developers yeah. go to. Yeah, but that's yeah, cool yeah, that they sure. got flown out. The smell on that plane, though. I don't know. If these guys were yeah. more dedicated than you, I don't know. About that. Man, imagine <laughs> that crew rolling down the street. We <laughs> went, cats there. We <laughs> went to uh, these these guys' house that we land. We land with people that we uh knew really well in game and when we got there i was just like oh my god this is disgusting man this oh no so bad yeah yeah but we had a hell of a time playing i played yeah. on a stack of books that's all that matters right <laughs> Uh, all right, last question. Bit of a comment here, but also a question. This is from Saxos. He says he sent a package from Norway, and uh, he sent that to us. So we'll be looking out for that. We do have a mailing address. It is posted in our Discord. So if you want to send us something, you can do that. 
Um, he also says, thank you. I have spent less money on PC games after you've talked about them. So I, are I we wonder, talking him out? Of games? Yeah, I wonder what that means. Does <laughs> like that that's mean... the opposite effect. The DL gaming not bump. <laughs> the uh, DL no, maybe he's, he's spending money on the right games now. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's right. He's, he's gotcha. checking out that DL gaming curator page and he's making the right choices. Of course, uh, yes. Okay, and he's asking, is Manor Lords the next big game? It's, it's Exos. Uh, I think it's the next big game for a subset of people, not for everybody. <laughs> for half the members on this podcast. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? For the best, some some would say <laughs> you guys some, some would say the brightest, the brightest and the best of us is the, is the uh Saxos. It, I know you're listening. First of all, I'm I'm humbled that you know you uh listened to games instead of played them and, and that's good enough for you. Um, if, if we fill that void of gaming, that's awesome. But what Manor Lords is going to fill for you is your beautiful town. You said you're from Stavanger, Norway. I'm just on Google Maps taking a look around. Uh, it's beautiful. You, you have uh, the ocean right on your doorstep. You have all these tiny islands hooked up by what looks to be an efficient highway system. You have these old, <laughs> beautiful buildings uh, that are multi multicolored. You have a, a bustling harbor. And however, but where beautiful... is your sawmill? Where is your? Uh... <laughs> uh, you have in this city something great, and I'm happy for you. But what Manor Lords will give you is something no Norwegian cute town uh, can give you, and that is why I will be playing. You know, I I'll be playing for me. I'll also be <laughs> playing for what Starvanger could have been if it wasn't the place you live. If it was a town in Manor Lords. Uh, and so, yes, it is the next big game, and uh, I'll see you in the manners. Uh, I'll, uh, we'll be the playing Lord's Manor. We'll, yes, we'll be in the Lord's Manor together. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I'm guessing that's what you're playing next week. Bitch, what? it's Manor Lords O'Clock. That's what's <laughs> fucking happening. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be hearing about that from uh, from you and Nick, the, uh, the work from home and full-time student. Got time to play Manor Lords over here. Uh, but for the working men, <laughs> what uh, what are we going to be playing? Uh, I might keep going with Control. I'm going to see if there is something okay. salvageable there, maybe. Um, and then, I, I mean, I say it every week. Uh, the thing I want to click on always is uh cyberpunk but i just don't because i gotta keep the ball rolling here dude i i've been playing less epoch you know like every week i give it a shot and then i start to doze off and i'm not saying it's a bad game but i think it's just the the you know you're grinding mm -hmm. and i yeah, can't dude, just survive a, through the grinding same thing it's with just, diablo it's like yeah. uh, the monotony of the game just yeah it puts me to sleep but but it is a good game you. um and hell divers i want to play hell divers so bad dude but, Did you um, join Freedom Fridays when it was happening? Apparently a little um, group that got together. I'm enslaved on Fridays at work, dude. So no. Right. I, don't. I forgot you guys are such hard workers, you know. It is uh Yeah. <sighs> um, I am going to be playing I, I might check out Parkitect. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I've got my eye on Fallout Tactics, or maybe I'll play Fallout 4 off of Amelia's account. I don't know um if you do bobby i would just say look up um essential mods just like whatever pc gamer 4? said yeah whatever yep. P you know I'm Bro, sure i barely PC got time has. to play the game i don't have time to mod <laughs> it <laughs> it's a lot faster but then you can talk Going about the whole vanilla. experience you know because i think there's a lot of people like you bobby and you can lead the way just be like uh you know if you want to get back it's worth it it's not worth it you know Whatever. Oh my know. god, yeah. Stavanger is so fucking beautiful. I'm walking your streets. Where am I? I'm on Verzen 18. Bro, this back alley is more beautiful than most North American fucking front lawns, dude. <laughs> dude, uh, we've been, you know, we're, I think we're going to Japan at the beginning of next year. And uh, even before that, we, we watch a lot of Japanese content, not from Japanese people, but from like Americans in Japan. Gotcha. And there's a like video of this person just walking down a neighborhood in Kyoto and it's like gorgeous. It's just a neighborhood, man. And you're just like, what the fuck? There's fish. 
there's fish in the drain the drains the water drain the storm drains fish live there because it's so clean oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's storm drain you can drink yeah. out of the storm drains and- ours are filled so- with oil and fucking yeah. hookers fucking high heels dude it's uh dude yeah. even uh, some tap water isn't even safe to drink it well well let's not get into it japan beautiful stavanger beautiful uh our hearts beautiful i don't know Amelia, do you want to end end the show yeah speaking for bobby christian non-existent uh nick and myself uh stavanger titties super white and fluffy but also perky Look at these bots in the chat. Yeah, we got botted. Dude, I just saw this like thing that 50% of activity on the internet is bots. And of that, like one third are malicious. Something like that. I just saw the headline before I got on here.